Stuck tuning slides are a common problem avoidable by applying a quality grease once per month. We like the Selmer grease. It's easy to obtain and works just fine. Please keep in mind that if a slide is stuck, it probably has been that way for some time, unlikely to move without specialized tools and chemicals that repair shops have. If you want to remove it, we recommend that you lay the instrument down with the bell off the table edge. Grasping the slide crook as shown, flex the slide, effectively walking it out of the instrument. If this does not work, send the instrument to the repair shop. Avoid striking the crook or tubes with a mallet. It only serves to crush the crook, blocking airflow and making a mess of response and intonation. Avoid jerk pulling with rags. Often only one tube is stuck. Jerk pulling may irreparably distend the slide, requiring a replacement at that point. Also, avoid using things like your feet to pull the slide. Like jerk pulling and using a mallet, the potential damage is not worth the risk you are taking. Bear in mind that by the time a slide is stuck, there is likely enough debris and gunk built up inside the instrument and enough damage elsewhere on the instrument to warrant a trip to the repair shop. When a top valve cap is stuck, it should be loosened to enable proper oiling. With a rawhide chime mallet, carefully tap around the cap perimeter lightly about 20 times. Remember, it's not how hard you hit it, it's how often. Light tapping loosens most stuck caps. Pliers are definitely dangerous and much more tool than is necessary. In the worst cases, valve casings and threads are crushed, costing up to $100 to repair. If the valve cap won't loosen, take the instrument to a repair shop. Like a stuck slide, at that point, there is probably enough debris and gunk built up inside the instrument and enough damage elsewhere on the instrument to warrant a trip to the repair shop. There are few things more frustrating than an instrument that will not play at all. Start by inspecting the valves to ensure they are in the right order. Check then to see if a valve is installed backwards. Some trumpets and cornets use valve guides that can position the valve in two opposite points, one being correct and one not. On a majority of student line trumpets and cornets though, the number on the piston barrel faces the mouthpiece, so start there. A little more elusive is a valve guide put in backwards. This happens when a player cleans their instrument at home and misassembles the pistons. With Yamaha large brass, check to see if the valve guide is in the right hole in the top of the piston. There are two holes there, one to set the valve guide and a much larger hole to serve as a vent. At our website is a downloadable PDF that describes the piston assembly order and proper valve guide position. Another thing to look for if an instrument is not playing is an obstruction. As technicians, we have found a myriad of objects inside instruments, including rags, mouthpieces, oil and grease bottles, clothing, animals, and some things that modesty prevents us from mentioning. Every now and then a student will approach you with their valve spinning in the casing, the piston unable to lock into its position. If it's a large brass wind, check to see if the plastic valve guide has broken or sheared. Also, check to see if the valve guide is upside down. Like valve guides installed backwards, this happens when a player cleans their instrument at home and misassembles the pistons. A missing rotary valve bumper is a noisy problem that just cannot be ignored. Masking tape to the rescue. Roll up a small tube of masking tape, sticky side in, the approximate diameter required to quiet the rotor, and align the witness marks seen under the valve cap. This is a quick, good, temporary fix to a vexing problem. Stuck rotors are common when an instrument has set idle for some time. Here's what to do. 
Oil the spindles and rotor body. Wait at least one hour. Attempt to dislodge the rotor by hand. We do not recommend banging on the rotor with mallets or with screwdriver mallet combinations. The spindle can bend, costing major dollars to repair. Spindle oil is specialized and is typically heavier than the oil used on the rotor body. Place spindle oil under the valve cap at the spot shown and on the opposite side of the rotor under the long spindle stop arm. To get oil to the rotors, place four to six drops of oil inside each valve slide. Insert the valve slide with the open part of the tubes facing up. Then, rotate the instrument to ensure the oil reaches the rotor body. Now, attempt to move the stuck rotor by hand. As before, do not bang on the rotor with mallets or screwdrivers. The resulting damage is not worth the attempt.